In a move that's turning heads across the Pacific and sparking intense debate among defense analysts, the Philippines is seriously considering acquiring five recently decommissioned Freedom-class littoral combat ships from the U.S. Navy, a potential game-changer for its maritime forces. These ships, which were previously offered to and ultimately rejected by Greece, could soon find a new home in the Philippine fleet, dramatically boosting its capabilities. The debate is fierce and multi-layered. Is this a clever modernization move on a tight budget, or a risky gamble on vessels that the U.S. Navy itself found problematic and costly to maintain? The Freedom Class was originally designed for speed, agility, and flexibility in coastal operations, but its service was marred by persistent mechanical issues, high maintenance costs, and early retirements. For the Philippines, which has long relied on an aging and often outdated fleet, the opportunity to acquire modern warships, even with their flaws, is both tempting and potentially transformative. But this decision isn't just about acquiring new hardware. It's a major geopolitical signal, deepening U.S.-Philippine security ties at a time of rising tensions in the South China Sea and growing regional uncertainty. Manila now faces a tough and complex choice the prestige and power that come with modern warships versus the daunting challenge of maintaining and operating technologically advanced vessels. The outcome of this decision will not only impact the Philippine Navy's capabilities today, but will also shape the country's defense posture and maritime security for decades to come. The big question remains, can the Philippines succeed where the U.S. Navy struggled and turn these ships into a true asset? And what level of support, training, and resources will Washington provide to help make these ships viable and sustainable for the Philippine Navy? We'll take a closer look at why Greece ultimately said no, what makes the Philippine case unique, and the significant challenges that lie ahead for Manila. The decision at hand could redefine the Philippine Navy's future, its role in regional security, and its standing among Southeast Asian navies. This is more than just a procurement story. It's a tale of national importance, strategic consequence, and the pursuit of maritime strength in a changing world. Earlier this year, Greece was offered the same Freedom-class ships and firmly declined. Their reasoning? High operational costs and complex maintenance requirements. While the upfront price was low, the long-term expenses, fuel, parts, upgrades, and specialized crews were unsustainable. Greece needed robust, heavily armed ships for blue water combat, not lighter vessels designed for coastal patrols. The Freedom Class simply didn't fit their doctrine or budget. Instead, Greece chose to invest in new frigates with predictable costs and proven capabilities. Their decision is a warning. These ships come with significant strings attached. Any buyer must look beyond the sticker price and consider the true cost and strategic fit. For Greece, the risks outweighed the rewards. The Freedom Class's biggest flaw? Its unreliable propulsion system, specifically the combining gear. This critical component has repeatedly failed, leaving ships stranded and requiring costly repairs. For Greece, inheriting this engineering headache was a deal-breaker. The modular mission system, meant to add flexibility, proved slow and underwhelming in practice. Many ships sailed with only basic armament, lacking the firepower needed for real combat. Reliability and proven performance matter more than untested tech. Greece chose certainty over risk. Their rejection highlights the importance of dependable warships in any navy. For the Philippines, the calculus is different. The main mission isn't high-intensity naval battles, but patrolling vast maritime zones and asserting presence in contested waters. With over 7,600 islands and a huge EEZ, the need is for ships that can cover distance, stay at sea, and show the flag. The Freedom Class, despite its flaws, offers speed, range, and modern sensors, an immediate upgrade over aging patrol boats. Acquiring five ships through the U.S. Excess Defense Articles program could rapidly expand the fleet at a fraction of the cost of new builds. For Manila, the trade-off is clear except maintenance challenges for a massive boost in capacity. These ships bring helicopter facilities and advanced radars, filling critical gaps. They're not perfect, but they're a leap forward and a foundation for future modernization. The Philippines sees opportunity where others saw only risk. The deal's biggest hurdle? The notorious combining gear, a component that's become infamous in naval engineering circles for its complexity and persistent issues. This isn't a minor issue, 
It's a fundamental flaw that sidelined ships, forced early retirements, and cast a long shadow over the entire class of vessels. The gear is designed to link powerful diesel engines and gas turbines to the water jets, enabling high-speed maneuvers. But repeated failures have left ships dead in the water, unable to fulfill their missions. For any Navy, unreliable propulsion isn't just inconvenient. It's a nightmare scenario that can compromise national security and operational readiness. The U.S. Navy retired these ships early because fixing the problem fleet-wide was too costly and too complex to justify continued investment. If the Philippines takes them, it inherits this challenge, along with the responsibility to find a lasting solution. Ignoring it isn't an option. Without a fix, these ships are liabilities, not assets, and could drain resources instead of strengthening the fleet. The entire deal hinges on a credible, funded solution to the combining gear, one that addresses both reliability and long-term maintenance. Without it, the promise of high-speed patrols and rapid response is meaningless, leaving the ships unable to deliver on their intended role. Philippine planners must demand a clear, actionable path to reliability before moving forward with any acquisition. The ship's value depends entirely on solving this technical puzzle. Without a solution, the risks may outweigh the benefits. It's the make-or-break issue for the entire acquisition, and the ultimate test of whether these ships can truly serve their new navy. If the Philippines decides to move forward with this ambitious project, U.S. support will be absolutely crucial at every stage. The partnership between the two nations has always been strong, but this challenge will require even closer cooperation and trust. The U.S. Navy, together with defense giant Lockheed Martin, has already developed a technical fix for the problematic combining gear. This solution involves not only installing stronger clutches, but also implementing advanced software upgrades to ensure long-term reliability and performance. Any transfer of technology or equipment would likely come with a comprehensive package, spare parts, ongoing technical assistance, and extensive hands-on training for Filipino engineers and technicians. U.S. experts could be embedded with local crews in Philippine shipyards, working side-by-side -side to make sure the fix is properly installed, thoroughly tested, and fully understood by everyone involved. This process isn't just about making repairs. It's a unique opportunity for the Philippines to develop and expand its own naval engineering expertise, building skills that will last for generations. By involving local shipyards and Filipino firms, the project would create valuable jobs, stimulate the local economy, and help reduce long-term reliance on expensive foreign contractors. Filipino engineers would not only learn from their U.S. partners, but also gain the confidence and experience needed to develop their own innovative solutions for future maintenance and upgrades. The ideal approach combines U.S. funding and parts, immersive hands-on training, and active participation from the Philippine industrial base, ensuring everyone has a stake in the outcome. This kind of collaboration could transform what started as a technical headache into a strategic opportunity for both countries. If successful, the project would not only boost the Philippine Navy's reliability, but also energize the country's growing defense industry and technological capabilities. Overcoming this challenge would be a powerful demonstration of the strength and resilience of the U.S.-Philippine alliance, both on land and at sea. Ultimately, it's a true test of partnership, technical skill, and local ingenuity, one that could inspire future projects. The outcome could set a new standard for future military cooperation, paving the way for even deeper collaboration in the years ahead. If the propulsion issues are solved, the strategic benefits for Manila are huge. Five Freedom-class ships would dramatically increase patrol capacity and maritime awareness. Their speed and endurance allow rapid response across the archipelago, something the current fleet can't match. Their presence would deter foreign incursions and support Coast Guard and fisheries enforcement. These ships also enhance interoperability with the U.S. and allies, sharing systems and procedures for seamless joint operations. In a crisis, they could integrate directly into U.S. Navy task groups. This level of cooperation is a force multiplier and strengthens the U.S.-Philippine alliance. Beyond capability, the acquisition would boost national morale and prestige. The Philippine Navy would shed its brown water image, signaling a new era of modernization. It's not just about ships, it's about national confidence and regional influence. The psychological impact is real, and it matters.
Adding five Freedom-class ships would be a game-changer for the Philippine Navy. The fleet would nearly double its modern surface combatants overnight. This allows for persistent presence in multiple hotspots, a luxury the Navy currently lacks. The ship's advanced sensors and helicopter facilities extend surveillance and anti-submarine reach. Their modular design, while imperfect, offers flexibility for missions like disaster relief, vital in a typhoon-prone nation. The LCS fleet could handle routine patrols, freeing up frigates for high-end missions and joint exercises. This division of labor creates a more balanced, versatile force. The Navy could respond to a wider range of challenges, from security to humanitarian crises. It's a leap toward a true blue water capability. The transformation would be felt across the region. The decision on the Freedom-class ships is a turning point for the Philippines. One path, play it safe, buy fewer new ships, and modernize slowly, risking continued weakness. The other, take a calculated risk, expand fast, and accept the challenge of complex maintenance. Success means a decade's leap in capability and a credible deterrent. But it all depends on U.S. support and Manila's readiness to sustain these ships. Without a solid plan, the dream could become a nightmare. This is about ambition, risk, and the future of Philippine naval power. What would you choose?